So up until fairly recently, Kali Linux has had a default root user policy. So basically what that means is that everything you do on that system will be done as a root user, but recently they've decided to change that. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm in for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you're anything like me, you may not have even heard of Kali Linux. I think I might have heard it briefly mentioned somewhere at some point, but if you'd asked me to describe what this distro is, I honestly would have no idea. So let's actually have a look at what the developers describe the distro as. So Kali Linux is a Debian based Linux distribution aimed at advanced penetration testing and security auditing. So it is a hacking focused distro. So Kali contains several hundred tools which are geared towards various information security tasks such as penetration testing, security research, computer forensics, and reverse engineering. Kali Linux is developed, funded, and maintained by Offensive Security. I'm not sure who this company is. I presume they are some important security company. Let's have a brief look at their site. So we train the top info security professionals. Okay, I've never heard of this company, but I'm sure that they're important within the hacking sphere or the information security sphere. So they are apparently a leading information security training company. Okay, so Kali Linux was developed to be a replacement of Backtrack Linux. I'm guessing that was another hacking focused distro that was previously used, but now I'm guessing maybe its development stopped or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's not too important to this video. So let's actually have a look at this article. So this is from It's Foss by Ankush Das. That's probably not even remotely close to correct. I'm sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Anyway, let's have a look at this article. I'll leave the link to this in the description down below. If you know how to pronounce it, tell me in the comment section maybe. Yeah, do that. So Kali Linux is a specialized Linux distribution for cybersecurity testing and hacking related tasks. So if you've used Kali Linux, you probably know that it followed a default root user policy. In other words, you're always a root user in Kali Linux. Whatever you do, you'll be accessing tools and applications as root by default. So you would normally think that this would be just a terrible security hole, and it absolutely is. But the reason why it didn't matter is because Kali Linux wasn't intended to be used as a daily driver system. So typically what you would do with it is you'd either run it as a live USB device or you would install it on like a virtual machine. It wasn't intended to be installed on hardware and if it was installed on hardware, you're not gonna keep it on hardware for long. You're not gonna do like your banking and stuff on it because you've got that default root user policy and it's intended to do actual real security work, not to be used as just a desktop Linux system. So it looks like everything back then was kind of root for all for everything. So the default root user policy existed. And that was the other reason why they had used the default root user policy apparently. So at that time, there's a bit of a quote down here, but at that time, basically most of the security tools they were using required root access. So if you're not gonna be running it as a daily driver, you might as well just give root access by default. It'll just save a little bit of extra time. So a lot of the tools back then either required root access to run or ran better when ran as root. So with this operating system that would be run from a CD, never be updated and had a lot of tools that intended root access to run it, it was a simple decision to have a everything as root security model. It made complete sense for the time. But if you go on YouTube now, you'll see there's still a lot of videos about using Kali Linux for doing pen testing, for doing cybersecurity stuff for doing just various hacking related content or hacking related tasks. But you'll also see there's more and more videos popping up where people are, they're not the sort of hacking channels that you'd normally expect to be talking about a distro like this. They're more of your, this isn't to be insulting, I'm the same sort of channel, this more sort of general Linux content. So there's more and more people making videos like that and they're getting more and more viewers. So. There's more and more people who are actually getting interested in running Kali Linux because their favorite Linux creator is running Kali Linux. Whether that be a security professional or whether that be someone just running it because they think it's a cool distro. So Kali Linux will now have a 
default non-root user like most other distributions. So what this basically means is that Kali Linux will just function like normal distributions do with their user policy. So you have your general user account, which can do normal things. Maybe you can run sudo to actually run root commands, but you don't actually always have root access. So if you wanted to do something like say, delete your home directory or something, you would need to then use sudo to actually request that access. Whereas as the root user, you don't need to request access. You're the root, you can do what you want. You're, if you're the root user, you obviously know what you're doing. So that's kind of the model behind that. So a default non-root model was necessary because a lot of users now use Kali Linux as their daily driver. So of course they do not recommend using Kali Linux for a replacement for stable distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, Manjaro, or anything else that's out there. However, with its active development, some users do consider using it on a day-to-day -day basis instead of just using it for its tools. So with a wide mainstream usage of the distro, I don't know how wide it is, I don't actually have statistics on the usage. I'm sure the Kali Linux team has more info on this. I can only really go by what I'm seeing on YouTube, what I see on like Reddit and various forum posts around the place. There seems to be more people using Kali Linux than back when I was first looking at what distro I wanted to use. So I'm only very new to using Linux, but I have been looking at using it for the past year, maybe two years or so. So I've seen the rise of people suggesting Kali Linux or the rise of people actually interested in running Kali Linux. So let's see, where were we at? So while we don't encourage people to run Kali as their day-to-day -day operating system, over the last few years, more and more users have started to do so, even if they are not doing it for pen testing full time, including some members of the Kali development team. <laughs> some members of the Kali team are even using it as their default distro. Okay, I guess, I guess that's a reason to make a change. <laughs> If there are people within your own team who think it's a good enough distro to run it as a daily driver, I guess maybe there's something to that. So with this usage over time, there is the obvious conclusion that default root user is no longer necessary and Kali will be better off moving to a more traditional security model. So I'm reiterating that you should not consider running Kali Linux to be fit for your daily tasks. If you do not utilize security related Kali Linux tools, feel free to experiment, but I wouldn't be so sure to rely on it. I kind of feel the same way. You should probably use literally anything else. Like there's a million and one different Ubuntu based distros. Just pick one of those or pick an Arch based distro. You don't need to use a security based distro just as your daily driver. If you want to do it, go right ahead. It's your computer, but I wouldn't recommend it. So from the next release, when you install Kali Linux, you'll be asked to create a non-root user that will have admin privileges. Tools and commands that require root access will be run with sudo. So as I said, it'll run like a normal distro. If you want to run a root tool, then you just run it with sudo. Nothing really changes from running any other distros. You just get a bunch of extra tools and the kernel's a bit different. It's kind of just a modified Debian at that point. It's already a modified Debian. It's a slightly less modified Debian. So Kali will now have a new default user and password for the Kali Linux live mode. So previously the password for root was root and root and now you have the user account that will be Kali and Kali. So that's if you're running it from a live CD or a live USB, something like that. So technically you won't find a groundbreaking difference, but note the default user ID and password in live mode is Kali. You can find the new non-root model implemented in the daily slash weekly builds if you want to test it early. So if you want to test it, then that's late July, I guess. Why is my cursor not working? Anyway, so because this is a professional distro, the Kali Linux team has decided they are going to create a way to make it so you actually can go back to the old security model. So if you are actually using this to, I don't know, do some cybersecurity work or you're doing pen testing work, you're doing literally anything where you actually require a distro like this or you require the tools that come with this distro, then there is a way that you can get back to that. So if you're a long time Kali Linux user, you may not find it convenient to add sudo before commands and then manually enter the command. You actually could just change your sudo as file to make your default user a effectively a root user, but eh, doesn't matter. So the good news here is you can get back to the old passwordless root rights with this command. <clears throat> Couldn't you just log in as the root user and just avoid that altogether? You could. Why? Yeah, you could just log in as root user and then not even have that problem. If you want to do it through this method, this is also available. So sudo dpkg reconfigure kali grant root. 
So what do you think about the default non-root user policy? Is it a good decision? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I don't even have to think about my conclusion when I do news articles like this. They kind of just write it for me. So yeah, as I said, what do you think about Kali Linux and its new security model? So personally, I don't really have any interest in running something like this. I don't do security work, as you know from the content I produce on my channel. I don't find any interest in it outside of being a viewer. So there's a couple of channels I watch on YouTube like Jim Browning and various other channels like that where they do things like going after phone scammers and trying to like take over their systems. And from a viewer's perspective, I do find stuff like that really interesting. But I don't really find any interest in actually going and performing the same tasks. I kind of just want to watch other people do it. So that's where I stand, but maybe you're different. Maybe you actually use Kali Linux as a professional. Maybe you do professional security testing work or you do pen testing, you do any stuff like that. So maybe something like this is actually gonna affect you. So let me know down in the comment section. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I have got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, then go there. I'm in there most days. And if I'm not around, then just send me a message and I'll actually respond at some point. Also, I've got my library, which is growing really, really fast. So go check that out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. Also down below, I've got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, I've got a couple of crypto wallets. I've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, and... LBC? Yeah, that sounds about right. And I've also got a Patreon and a PayPal, so feel free to use any of those. Obviously, if you don't want to support the channel, that's entirely fine, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, down below, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, YouTube's never going to push them to anyone, so go to Twitter and Mastodon and you can actually get updates there. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, so I'm out.